So this is a basic schematic of what's actually going on with the electronics in the roof. We've got the windscreen here and we've got the, the roof canvas and roof structure at the back here. There are two controllers, so two uh, control units that actually uh, control what the roof is actually doing. The convertible module, which is in the boot of the car, as well as the rear body control module, or rear BCM, which sits under the left-hand seat. Most of the work, as it turns out, is actually done by the rear BCM, uh, but the, obviously the convertible module is involved as well. They will talk to each other using the CAN bus, so they sequence the order of events, etc. Uh, but both those control units are actually involved. So we'll go from front to back and we'll talk about what we've actually got. The first thing is where the actual latch that hook actually goes into into the windscreen frame there is actually there are two sensors in there there is a reed switch and a micro switch and what a reed switch is it's a magnetic switch so there's actually a big magnet in the the front of the actual hook so as it gets closer and actually goes into here the actual reed switch actually senses that and then it actually gives a signal to let it know that this is actually all the way down here in addition to that, you've got a micro switch, which is actually in the little thing where the hook actually goes into. And when it activates, it actually tells it whether or not the actual hook is in or out. So there are two things to say whether or not this thing is actually hooked in correctly at the front. The fact that the hook is actually into here with the micro switch, and also the fact that this is hard up against the, the windscreen frame using the reed switch. They, those signals go to the rear BCM. Uh, the way to test that, you can actually pull the, the left seat out and get access to the connections under the rear BCM, but it's actually dead simple just to pull this off, dismantle a little bit, and actually test each of these switches, and I'll show you how to do that. The hook mechanism here, which is on the front of the actual roof mechanism itself, there is a motor, which is the thing that actually moves the hook up and back. It's 12 volts. <coughs> It's controlled by a relay. There's one relay for going, uh, extending it, and one for retracting it. All it does is just reverse the, the polarity of the voltage going through it to make it either go one way or the other. Those relays are in the back next to the control, the convertible uh, module. However, those relays are actually controlled via the rear BCM. Uh, in addition to that, there are two micro switches in the hook mechanism as it either opens or close. When it's uh, at full extent, either open or close, it gives an indication to show that it's actually in that position. Again, that micro switch or those micro switches, they give an indication to the rear BCM to tell the, the rear BCM what position the, the hook is actually in. Uh, these micro switches here, which show the position of the roof as it opens and closes. There's one on each side and they're riveted into the frame and you only get access to those if you remove the roof. They're pretty simple to remove. You just drill the rivets out uh, and replace the switch itself. There's one on each side. The one on the right hand side only has a single micro switch in it. And on the wiring diagram, it's called signal. And the one on the left hand side has two micro switches in it which they call signal one and signal two. Interestingly, signal one and signal, so the one on the left and right are actually joined so that all it needs is a good signal for one of those for a closed circuit to actually uh, tell you that it's good, but you can test those independently. Uh, in addition to that, you've got the motor itself, which actually makes the motor go up, the roof go up and down. There's one of those on each side. So in the assembly, there's a connection that goes to it and there is the, the motor, which actually obviously makes the thing turn and go up and down. It takes 12 volts. It's controlled by the convertible module. And depending on the, the polarity of the voltage that goes through it, either opens or closes. In addition to that, inside that motor assembly, there is a hall sensor, which is a, a position sensor. So as the roof goes, down and up, it gives a progressive voltage change to the CVM to show what position the, the roof is actually in. So whilst the BCM actually gets a basic 
a basic position from these micro switches here. It actually gets a much more accurate position here from the hall sensor of what position the, the roof is actually in. The electrics for it, like I talked about before, this goes directly to the, the BCM. However, for the hook and the micro switches here and the motor, all go through the plugs which are at the back of the, the cabin. So if you remove the, the rear carpet, you'll see those connections on the left hand side. There's a big black plug there with about 16 connections or 16 pins on each of them. The one on the right doesn't have many because all it has is the connections for the micro switch, which is only that signal, and for the motor, and there's five pins for that, two for the motor and three for the hall sensor. Whereas the one on the left actually has the same, except there's an additional one because there's an additional micro switch connection, as well as all of the connections for the hook. So you can actually test all of those from here to actually check what the indications are from everything. I actually removed the hook to actually make that a little bit easier, but you could quite happily motor this just using the hand tool that's in uh, up the front, which in your toolkit, to actually move this back and forth and test the indications at the plug here, whether or not these switches are open and closed from the pinout on the wiring diagram. You'll notice from the connections that go down here to these big plugs at the back, downstream from there, these connections go to both the CBM, which is going to be for the motors here, and also to the BCM for the micro switches and also for the, the hook indications. Here's where the convertible module, as well as the two relays for the hook motor are in the, the back of the car, so the CVM is this one here. There are three connections that can be easily removed. If you need to remove the CVM from here, it's just a couple of clips on the left-hand side here. You pull these uh, towards you, and then this will slide to the left, and then you can remove that. The relay carrier here doesn't need to be removed uh, to do that. The two relays on the left-hand side here, the black ones, control the the hook opening and closing motor. So one of those gets activated. It's the one on the left for closing, the one on the right for opening. So this is testing of the micro switch that's in the, the windscreen latch. As per the little diagram here, that is the green, black, and brown wires. I've connected those to the multimeter. You can see where it is at the moment where the hook isn't engaged. It's a closed circuit, so it's like showing close to zero resistance. And as soon as I uh, put my finger in there and say the hook is actually in there, then it goes to an open circuit and infinite resistance. The micro switch is actually just that little thing down in there and you can see the little plunger move in and out as you operate the thing. This is how you're going to test the, the reed switch. The reed switch is actually in along here and it's a switch that gets activated when a magnet gets really close to it. Now it didn't matter what how strong a magnet I could find actually shove up against this. I couldn't get it to activate. The only way I could actually do it was to remove the lock. And there's a whopping great big magnet in here. And so as soon as you act to put that against that there, you can see it closes the circuit. And if I remove it, it opens the circuit again. So whilst the micro switch is actually showing you, like the little one over here that we looked at before, it's showing you if the hook is actually in there and moving that. Whereas what this is doing, the reed switch is showing that that lock is hard up against the actual locking mechanism as well. So there's two parts to this sort of this testing mechanism. To get access to the, the hook on the windscreen or the actual latching point, uh, this is the lighting module that's going to sit there. All you need to do is just get a plastic pry tool and sort of get in underneath here on either side and that'll just pop straight up. As you can see, there are clips there, there and on the other side, but that's pretty easy to pop out. On the other side, there'll be a connection for the electrics for the lights. So you're just going to pop that up. And once you get to this here, you've got three screws there that are all M6. They take 10 Newton meters. Remove those and this thing just pops straight out. Once you get that to the other side, uh, you'll have the electrical connector that goes in there. There's that little hook in that position that we showed before. Just lift that up, you can pull that out and then that whole thing can be removed. I find it's much easier to test these when I can actually remove the pins. Uh, they're pretty simple to pull out. So I find that just putting a piece of something under there just to support it. Small flathead screwdriver, little baby one, 
and then there's a little barb in there that you can see. And then when you initially press it and pull it out, it's gonna to come to that position there, and then we're gonna do it again, and the thing will pop out pretty simply. Don't have to push very hard. And out she comes. And putting it back in is just shoving it in like that, pretty simple. Uh, on this, when it actually came in the, uh, the hook itself, so this clip here is going to go on that. We're just going to push it over there and actually just sort of slides forward like that. And then that, you can see there's like a little knob in there. It's going to go on that knob down in there. And then as well, the end of that is going to slide under that little hook there. And then that's in place. And what you'd normally do is have it up like about that, put the plug in when you actually, prior to installation, and then push that down and then you can install. Prior to removing any of these pins, make sure you take a photograph of it uh, so you know exactly where each of these wires, where the colour goes, because clearly that's critical. When you're connecting the alligator clips of your multimeter later on, be careful, don't connect it up to these bits up here. Connect it up to the really strong bits at the end because these can actually get crushed pretty simply. They're pretty fine. So uh, connect them to the bit where the actual crimping has happened up where the wire actually connects. Here is the hook mechanism. Uh, there are a couple of things on here. There are the micro switches that just tell it what position the, the hook is actually in. As well as on this side here is the motor. There are two contacts down here, which is from a separate plug. And if you wanted to test the motor, you could just put 12 volts uh, to that. doesn't matter about the polarity because it just reverses it to either open or close. And if you were doing that, I would... Uh, just hand move this so obviously on the other side here we've got the tool that you've got in your toolbox that goes in there and you can twist that one way or the other to get it to the mid position and then you can quickly put 12 volts on that to see if it actually moves where the problem is that most likely is going to happen with this roof which we've seen a few times are these micro switches here and the micro switch is actually bending up because what happens is that these two micro switches <coughs> The way these two micro switches work is that like this, where they are deactivated, so they, that they press down like that. This is in a mid position at the moment, so they only get pressed down at the ends of their travel. So if it's uh, opening it, it's actually going to rotate this all the way around there. And this piece here is going to push against that. And when it goes in the other direction, and this whole thing rotates that way, then that bit there is gonna press against that there. But the way these micro switches work, they show a closed circuit whilst they're in this position here, and that opens a circuit when it does that. So when it's mid-travel, it's gonna be a closed circuit. So you only get current going back to the, the BCM to say that it's mid-travel, and it's only when it gets to the full extent that it actually opens a circuit on the far end. So it's pretty easy to test. Uh, you can either just use pins or I can actually just put an uh, alligator clip on the, the ends. So you can see it's open, oh, sorry, it's, it's a closed circuit. And if I press that, that's going to open it, so that works fine. Uh, the middle contacts are the common ground between the two because there are actually only three wires that go to it. So you can see those both work quite happily. You can see the common ground is the one in the middle here. The problem with these is these actually get bent because the only thing that's actually holding it in place are these pins. So what a lot of people will do is actually just put super glue under these, which I'm actually going to do now, now that I've got the thing open, to keep those in place and so they can't bend up. And I think it's especially this one here because it wouldn't need much of a bend for this thing that thing to rotate up and then it would actually not get um, pushed by that that knob at the end there if you actually wanted to replace the micro switches like to replace this lock is obviously extremely expensive these little push on i'm not sure what you call these things but you see them everywhere they just push on a pin you can quite happily just pop those off and you just remove that whole thing and go and get someone to solder on a new a new micro switch when I'm sure these are a pretty common variety micro switch to, uh, to find an electronic shop. The super glue that I put on these, all I did was just get a blob and put it one there, 
one there, one there, one there, and just give it a bit of a poke to allow that to gently feed down underneath the micro switch so it sticks to that circuit board a bit better and hopefully that'll stop that problem of bending up in the future. To remove the, the lock itself, you'll have to remove the cover that sits over the top of it. Uh, there are the two pins on the cover that actually sit in those holes there. So the cover says you've got to lift those out and then the back bit is actually going to be on that lug there. So you just have to pull it quite hard this way and then slide it rearwards. Have a look at the other video on uh, panel access that I've made to show you how to do that. Uh, and then you've got four screws that are like this and before you remove them make sure you get a paint pen and put exactly where they're going to sit when you remove these these are in really tight they've got red loctite on them so you'll need a breaker bar and they've got 36 newton meters in them uh, but still, to actually get them free initially, they are really going to crack free, which is going to be a bit disconcerting. So make sure when you do that, you'll need a breaker bar, and make sure that where you do it, I found that sitting in the left seat, and then pulling on the breaker bar so it's like inboard of the windscreen, because it'll be really easy to actually have this thing go, uh, and give, and smash your windscreen as you're removing these. So be a bit careful when you're doing that. Uh, and then once you remove all four screws, you can gently lower it down. You can actually remove the plug here on the motor. There's just a tab on the inside that pulls straight out. But the, on the other side, for where the micro switch connection is, you actually have to lower that gently and then gently pull that out to get access to all of this here. On the left hand plug, there's a bunch more connections than on the right. Uh, on each side, you'll have the the contacts for the the micro switches like we've just tested in addition to that you've got the large uh, wires that are for the motor so if you actually wanted to test the motor you could put 12 volts into those and make sure that the motor is disconnected so it's in manual mode and you can move the roof up and down by hand so you can actually test that you'll actually hear it move um, and it doesn't matter about the polarity because one way is to make it go up the other way is to make it go down if you're just checking to see if it actually moves uh, in addition to that, there are the contacts for the the latch, so the hook switches that we that we tested by actually pulling the the hook out. You could actually just put them in here and actually just motor the hook by hand to see what uh, what indications that you get. Save so you taking the hook out if you didn't actually want to do that. Uh, in addition to that, you have the hall sensors, which are actually part of the motor itself. Now, you would need some specialised equipment to actually be able to test those. They rarely fail, being a halt sensor, there's no moving parts inside. And really the only way to see if they are broken or not is to uh, use PWIS and to see what indications they're giving as you're motoring the roof up and down. But that would be unusual for those to fail. But all the others, you can actually test quite happily with a multimeter or use 12 volts on the motor if that's actually what you want to do. So this is how I'm going to test the micro switches on the, the motors. So on each side there's obviously a connector uh, which you can disconnect. Uh, I've shoved a one millimeter drill bit down each of those because that seems to be a really nice size to get good connection with the, uh, the connectors on the inside and I've connected up a multimeter to it. And as per the, the diagram, I can test each of the, uh, the circuits. This one here that I'm Checking is the signal one, which is pins six and eight on the, uh, the, the connector itself. All the pins are, are numbered. You can see those pretty easily, as well as you can check those on the wiring diagram against the wire color. So it's pretty simple to work out what's what. Then what you can do is move the roof in manual mode and see what indications you get. For signal one, I'm expecting that with it all the way down like it is at the moment, it should be an open circuit, which is what it's showing. It's lifting it up, that's all the way down. That's lifted about maybe 10 centimeters and it's shown an open, sorry, closed circuit, which is what I want. It's still a closed circuit there. And I'm gonna jump out of the car. And as I close the roof, I bet that's about 10 centimeters or so. And it's now showing it's an open circuit all the way down. So it actually seemed to be about 10 centimetres from either end. It showed the, the, 
the open circuit at the extremities and a closed circuit in the middle. So this is signal two, which is pins five and eight on the left hand plug. As you can see, the roof is all the way down at the moment and it's showing a, an open circuit. Now if I lift it, it continues to show an open circuit until it gets to about maybe a foot open and then it closes the circuit. And that circuit remains closed until it's fully closed. So uh, for signal two, it is an open circuit until it's about a foot uh, lifted up out of the compartment uh, and then it shows a closed circuit all the way to touching the windscreen. This is on the right hand side of the car. This is where there's only one micro switch connections, pins one and two for the signal. And it's exactly the same as signal one, as you would expect because those two micro switches are actually connected to each other and only needs to have one of those made to actually uh, to close the circuit. Uh, and as the, it was with the signal one, you basically, it's a, as it is now the roof is down and it's showing an open circuit and all I need to do is lift it about 10 centimetres and it'll close the circuit. Uh, I won't lift it out of the roof, out of the, uh, the back there, but it basically stays closed, the circuit, all the way until the roof is nearly touching the windscreen and then it opens again, which is exactly the same as what you would expect on the other side.